roses, candles, maybe a wedding. Come and join me and we learn to do a table centre. to look at an all-round table arrangement that would be ideal for a wedding maybe a christening or a birthday party so I've got my glass container I've got my floral foam and a plastic container and that's going to sit quite comfortably there on the top and the plastic container is going to prevent any of the water leaking out from my floral foam into the bottom of that glass container. Now I've got myself some gorgeous grey candles and they fit perfectly in these little plastic candle holders. The prong on the bottom will insert really well into my floral foam and we just need to make sure that they're straight when we're looking at them from different angles. So we're going to pop those two both into the center. Hopefully they're fairly straight. We can move them about when we look at them at the very end but that's the basic start. So my two candles in the center of my floral foam and I'm going to make a design that's a bit informal so not following any type of set pattern I have some gorgeous roses some spray roses and a really pretty clematis and I'm hoping to drape some materials down a little bit over that glass container not too much that we hide it but enough to give us a really pretty floral design now you might not have seen foliage like this before this is a dyed asparagus and it's a wonderful shade of pink. I quite often use it Christmas time in gold and silver and it also comes in a beautiful champagne colour. But this obviously is a, almost a baby pink. And this is dyed before we buy it and um, it's great for us to use if we want to introduce just a slight bit of variety of colour. Um, it lasts really well, it almost dries naturally over time. But what you do need to be careful of, it doesn't become wet and then touch the bridesmaids or the bride's dress. So even though I quite often use it in the table centres or in archways, flower clouds and that type of thing, I very rarely use it on the bridal flowers themselves. Because once it's wet, the dye will come off quite easily and then we don't want to have an unhappy bridal party. Just a very informal placement, I've angled everything downwards so that it helps to cover my plastic dish and it also gives a seamless line between my container and my floral foam. I've worked low down on the floral foam so I can have plenty of room to put my fresh flowers in. Now I'm going to introduce a different colour and a different texture and we have some of the grey eucalyptus and again it's got a really lovely shape to it. It cascades beautifully and will drape down over the side of my container. This is where it helps to know your different flower types and your different foliage varieties so that you can pick the flowers and the foliages that will naturally trail down over the side. If you're picking very rigid materials, maybe hard ruscus or pistache, you're not going to get that elegant shape of it dripping over the side of the container. We'll just keep going with a bit more of the greenery all the way around. I'm trying to create a really clear outline with the foliage. Don't want anything too heavy at this stage because the glassware of course is quite fragile and quite delicate so we don't want to have anything too heavy or robust on the top. It's important to think about your principles and elements of design and really consider the overall harmony of the arrangement. Delicate, soft and pretty is what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to introduce a slightly bigger broader leaf it's another variety of eucalyptus and I'm going to bring this a bit closer to the top cut myself a few smaller pieces don't worry if your container slides around there in the glass bowl that's 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 quite normal and generally if we're delivering to a wedding we would deliver these as two separate pieces so the glassware will be packed with bubble wrap in a box and then the arrangements will be taken down separately and we'd place the designs together when we got to the reception. Okay, so now I'm going to introduce a bit of contrast in colour. I'm going to bring in a bit of the green ruscus. So this is the soft ruscus, sometimes known as Italian ruscus. This one has again a beautiful shape to it. And if you can't get hold of florist material like I can, then pop out into the garden. Ivy would work really well in this. That would cascade really nicely down over the side. 
You might have some jasmine foliage or some clematis vine in the garden and that would work beautifully in this type of design. Right, last few pieces of the ruscus and I think we're nearly done for a moment. Now I can still see the floral foam in the middle so I've still got quite a lot of work to do to fill that in but for the moment I'm going to start adding my flowers. Got an even distribution of the green, an even distribution of the grey foliage and I've got that wispy pink fern just coming out very elegantly from the centre of the design. Now I'm going to start with my main flower type and this is going to be this wonderful pink rose. This is pink avalanche. To be honest they're such a good quality there's very few petals that have to be removed from the outside and look at the size on that isn't that amazing? So with a large headed rose like this um, we would have these in a couple of days before the wedding so that they had chance to fully open and then you, you know you have that really big head for the bride. We'd make a hand tied posy with this size rose it would be beautiful for the bride to carry. Isn't that fantastic? And I'm just cutting them quite short and just spreading out the colour. I'm not trying to create a pattern. I think this style of arranging is quite simple and if I had too much of a set pattern it's going to spoil the overall design so we're a little bit more random in this kind of informal flower arrangement. Fairly even distribution of the pink I might decide to add another one around this area later on because there's a bigger concentration of the pink here but I can easily go and find another one if I feel the colour distribution isn't quite good enough. Next I'm going to introduce a spray rose and I haven't had this one before and I have forgotten the variety but I will link it in the description box right at the very end. It's a wonderful colour, it's almost like a dark maroon pink on the outside and um, I thought this would look really attractive alongside the pale pinks. And I'm going to start with some smaller pieces to the outside and then bring some larger pieces up towards the top there. What you need to remember if you're using candles in an arrangement is that when they burn down you need to make sure they're not going to burn too close to the flowers. So give yourself at least two thirds space there for the candle to burn down. Or let your customer know that the candles are there for a decorative purpose and that they shouldn't be lit. Now I'm trying to place everything in at different levels. Remember each week I talk about depth. And in this type of all around arrangement, depth is created by placing flowers at a lower level. So you get that three dimensional effect rather than the overall design being flat and, um, and very static is what we call it in floristry. Aren't they magical? Now these would work really well in headdresses, and buttonholes and that type of thing. Again, they're a really good quality. They've been conditioned properly. It's important that you look after your flowers correctly. Then they will last a really long time for you. Now I'm going to put this whole head in as it is because it's a bit short if I cut the individual heads. But it's going to fit in that gap really nicely. And so far we've only got the pink colour in in the arrangement. But now I'm going to introduce another of my favourite roses. This is called Kahala and it's got a slightly lime green outside but it's one of the very pretty garden roses and it's got that really interesting centre point to it. This is going to work as a contrast against the pink so we've got a variety of colours and it brings in that really interesting garden look that a lot of the brides are looking for at the moment. Now of course lots of these flowers aren't going to be available in your local supermarket. This style of flowers is something that you'd have to order from a florist shop but you could do an arrangement just as nicely with supermarket roses. Just look for a variety of head sizes and try and get some better quality roses from the supermarket where you know the head is going to open up. Sometimes the small little buds from the supermarkets don't open up as well as we'd like them to. My final garden rose is going to work in this position here and it's a really pretty shape. And then next I'm going to introduce a flower called clematis. You might know this from the garden, it's a climber that we have growing from the spring right the way through to the autumn. Again it has that natural downward movement so the weight of the head will pull the stem down so this is going to work 
fantastically round the outside. If it's too long, I will cut it shorter, but I'm hoping to leave it in the arrangement as it is. Yes, isn't that lovely? We've got that real sort of midsummer night's dream effect to this arrangement. There's the gorgeous colorings of the lilacs and the pinks and that beautiful vibrant white. Now, if you're new to watching these tutorials, my name's Sharon, welcome to my YouTube channel. I often talk about the principles and elements of design in the floral arrangement. And if you haven't seen the video where I describe the principles and elements of design, then I'll link it in the card shirt and you can go back and have a look. But learning the principles and elements of design for flower arranging is quite important because they're almost the building blocks to a really good floral design. And what I've tried to do with this design is in think about all those elements and principles of design. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the elements and principles of design, I normally start by teaching the elements and they are shape and form, space, texture, color, and line. And not everybody talks about line, but as a florist, I always incorporate line into the elements of design. So if we think about this arrangement here, we have individual shapes, and we have an overall three-dimensional form. We have texture that's been created by the flowers. So we have some rough textures in our foliage. We have soft and smooth textures in our flowers. In between the flower placements is space. That's called negative space because there's nothing in the gap. Where there is a flower, we refer to that as positive space. You need to have negative space in traditional flower arranging so that there is, so that the design doesn't become overcrowded, too fussy and too cluttered. Color for me is quite subjective, is cultural and symbolic, and is seen very differently by different people. There's loads of color theory to learn, and if you're serious about flower arranging, then you need to start looking at color theory. Then we move on to the principles of design, and they are balance, proportion, scale, rhythm and repetition, dominance, contrast, and then harmony. And if we think about this arrangement here, I need balance to stop the arrangement falling over. And that's what we call actual balance. That's really important if your arrangement is tall because you don't want your arrangement to fall over. Color balance is also really important so that the colors are evenly distributed throughout the arrangement and one side of the arrangement doesn't become more dominant than the other. Scale is important in this arrangement as well because the flowers need to be in keeping with my container. They need to be in keeping with one another. So we need to have slightly smaller flowers and slightly larger flowers, which creates the rhythm and movement throughout the arrangement. Also, you need to consider the room that the flowers are going into. It's no good as making an arrangement this size and then placing it in a huge stately home with grand large tables because the flower arrangement would just disappear in the overall space. So rhythm and repetition is created by repeating shapes and repeating patterns and your eye will move from one flower to the next. We also use line to create rhythm and repetition. The only line I've created in this arrangement is from the candles and it makes your eye draw down into the focal point. So contrast can be created with the elements of design. So we have contrast of texture, contrast of color, and contrast of shape. We might have a round shape or a spike shape. We might have a rough texture against something smooth. Too much contrast makes your design very, very busy and complicated. Then we have dominance, and dominance is usually your focal point or your focal flower. And in this design, my focal flower is going to be my larger pink rose. And that is the flower that your eye will be instinctively drawn to. It's the bigger, most dominant part of the flower arrangement. And then harmony, is when all of the principles and elements work well alongside one another and you have an overall theme or a oneness 
to your floral design. So for me, this arrangement is quite elegant. It's quite sophisticated. It has a little bit of a country style to it, but because it's in glassware, for me, that makes it more appropriate for a grand allocation, more than a barn or a country retreat. And I, always, I often equate harmony to the way you dress or the way you style your home. You dress yourself with a particular style in mind or you decorate your home with a particular style in mind. You might have matching furniture, you might have contrast in furniture, but you probably wouldn't put an 80s style sofa in your living room alongside very modern white decor. And that's the same with the flower arrangement. The harmony, the overall style needs to all come from the same period of time, the same feel and the same theme. I'm hoping that's given you a better understanding of the principles and elements of design. Now I'm just gonna pop in another rose. So this is a, just a plain white rose. This one is called Countdown. Again, it's going to give me a variety in texture and a variety in shape of my flower heads. And I really like the green coloring on the outside. I know that many florists remove the petals from the outside, uh, what we refer to as the guard petals. But for me, it really depends on the quality of them. This Rose in particular has quite nice quality petals on the outside, so I'm going to leave them on. This one doesn't have very good petals on the outside, so we need to remove them, otherwise we're going to get a very angry customer. But other than that, the rose is almost perfect. The rose is going to be my final flower, but you could, if you wanted to add a filler flower like Gypsophilia, you could go on and add another rose if you wanted to, but I think this is an ample selection of flowers for this style of container and the size of my container as well. So what do we think? Something soft, feminine and quite gentle, a really pretty table centre and something that has a very Georgian feel to it. So if you've been watching Bridgerton, this is a style that you would see down the centre of those very grand tables in the dining room. As always, thanks for watching. It's been lovely to have you back one more time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell if you wanted to be notified every time I upload a new tutorial. Please comment in the box below if there's anything else you want to see. And come and join me on the private Facebook group. I'll name it just on the bottom of the screen here. It's called Sharon's Innovations Group and you can come and join us, have a little chat, make some new friends and share and learn some new ideas about flower arranging. So bye for now and thanks for watching. See you again soon.